Sermon of St. Cyprian, Bishop and Martyr, for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Manifold and wonderful, dearly beloved brethren, are the divine favors by means of which the rich and inexhaustible divine mercy labors and never ceases to labor for our salvation. For this cause the Father has sent his Son, that he might redeem us, giving us life and preserving us in it, and that he might make us children of God, the Son, willed to be sent, and to become the Son of Man. He stooped down to us, that he might raise us up, a people who before lay prone. He was wounded, that he might heal our wounds. He became himself a servant, that he might deliver the enslaved. He submitted to death, that he might confer immortality on mortal men. Such are the great and manifold gifts of the divine mercy, but yet more, what providence is this, and what clemency, that there has been provided for us a special means whereby we may win salvation, so that on man once redeemed yet ever more anxious care is bestowed to preserve him. For when the Lord at his coming healed the wounds that afflicted Adam, and cured him of the ancient poison of the serpent, he gave a law to man restored, and bade him sin no more, lest to him who sins a greater evil befall. We have been drawn together and enclosed, as it were, in a narrow space by this rule of blamelessness. Nor had the weakness and folly of frail humanity anything that could help it, had not the divine clemency, again making known to us the ways of justice and mercy, opened to us a certain way of guarding our soul's health, so that whatever the stains we have contracted after our baptism, we may wash them away by the giving of alms. The Holy Spirit speaks to us in the sacred scriptures and says, by mercy and faith, sins are purged away. Proverbs. Not indeed those offenses that were committed before baptism, for they are purged away by the blood and sanctification of Christ. And again he says, As water quencheth a flame of fire, and alms resisteth sins. Ecclesiasticus. Here also is it shown to us, and proved, that as the fire of hell is put out by the labor of saving water, so is the flame of evil doing extinguished by good works and alms deeds. And since but once is for forgiveness of sins bestowed by baptism, yet steadfast and uninterrupted almsgiving bestows on us again, as in baptism, the remission of our offenses. This the Lord also teaches us in the gospel. For when the disciples were criticized for eating with unwashed hands, he defended them and said, He that made that which is without made also that which is within. But give alms, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Luke teaching us and showing us that it is not the hands that must be washed, but our hearts, and that we must be at pains to remove inward rather than outward stains. For he who has purified himself inwardly has also begun to purify himself exteriorly. For when the soul is made clean, the skin and body begin likewise to be made clean. And again, warning us and teaching us whence we can be made clean, he adds that we must give alms. He who is himself merciful teaches us and exhorts us to be merciful, and because he seeks to save those whom he has at a great price redeemed, he shows how those who after baptism have become defiled can again be made clean. Let us then, dearly beloved, acknowledge this healthful gift of the divine clemency, and let us, who are never free of some wound in our conscience, cure our souls purifying and cleansing them of sin by the aid of these spiritual remedies. Do not let anyone flatter himself that he has a pure and stainless heart, so that, confiding in his blamelessness, he considers he has no need to apply a remedy to his wounds, for it was written, Who can say, My heart is clean, I am pure from sin? Proverbs. And again, John in his epistle states and declares, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. First John. But if there can be no, no one without sin, and if anyone who says he is blameless is either conceited or a fool, how necessary then, how considerate the divine mercy, which knowing that to those who were healed there will afterwards come flesh, fresh wounds, has given us these saving remedies to heal us and to take care of our wounds again. Finally, dearly beloved, Never has the divine warning ceased and grown silent, since in the Holy Scriptures, both of the Old and the New Testament, the people of God are ever and in all places urged to do works of mercy. And whosoever is instructed unto the hope of the kingdom of heaven is bidden in the prophesying and exhortation of the Holy Spirit to give alms. God ordained and commanded Isaiah, Cry, he says, cease not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show the people their wicked doings, 
and the house of Jacob their sins, Isaiah. And when he commanded him to reproach them for their sinfulness, and when in the full force of his wrath he had made known their iniquities, and had declared that neither by entreaties nor by prayers nor by fastings could they make satisfa- satisfaction for their sins, nor could they be by clothing themselves in sackcloth and ashes soften the anger of God, yet in the end, proving to us that God can be appeased by almsgiving alone, he goes on to say, Deal thy bread to the hungry, and bring the needy and harmless into thy house. When thou shalt see one naked, cover him, and despise not thy own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall speedily arise, and thy justice shall go before thy face, and the glory of the Lord shall gather thee up. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall hear. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Isaiah. The the means to propitiate God are given us in God's very words. The divine teachings make clear to us what sinners must do, make satisfaction to God by good works, and that sins are purged away by the rewards of mercy. And in Solomon we read, Shut up alms in the heart of the poor, and it shall obtain help for thee against all evil. Ecclesiasticus. And again, He that stoppeth his ear against the cry of the poor shall also cry himself and not be heard. Proverbs. Nor will the man who could have been merciful and was not receive mercy from God, nor will he, even through prayer, win anything from the divine compassion, who hardened his own heart to the prayer of the poor. The Holy Spirit has declared this to us in the Psalms, saying, Blessed is he that understands concerning the needy and the poor, for in the day of evil the Lord shall deliver him. Psalms. Daniel, mindful of these warnings, when Nebuchadnezzar was terrified by his evil dream, offered him the means of receiving divine help to prevent the disaster, saying to him, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to thee, and redeem thou thy sins with alms, and thy iniquities with works of mercy to the poor. Perhaps he will forgive thy offenses. Daniel. But the king, paying no heed to his counsel, suffered the afflictions and disasters of his dream, when he could have avoided them and escaped them, when he, had redeemed, when he could have redeemed his sins with almsgiving. And the angel Raphael bears witness to the same and exhorts us to give alms freely and generously, saying to to us, Prayer is good with fasting and alms deeds, for alms delivereth from death, and the same purges the way sins. Tobias. He shows us that prayer and fasting is not enough, and that they are to be assisted by alms deeds, that supplication alone avails little to obtain what we ask, unless joined to good works and acts of mercy. The angel reveals and makes clear to us and confirms to us that our requests become efficacious through almsgiving, that our life shall be delivered from dangers by almsgiving, that our soul shall be delivered from death through almsgiving. And, dearly beloved, we do not say this to you without being able to confirm from the witness of truth what the angel Raphael made known to us. For his testimony is confirmed from an event fully recorded in the Acts of the Apostles which proves to us that we can be freed not alone from the second, but even from the first death by means of almsgiving. When Tabitha, who was much given to good works and almsgiving, became ill and died, book of Acts, Peter summoned to her lifeless body. He was summoned to her lifeless body. And when he, when he with apostolic zeal, had come in great haste, there round about stood the widows, weeping and praying, who showed him the cloaks and tunics and all the garments they had in the past received from her. They pleaded from, for the departed, not alone with their voices, but also with their good works. Peter believed that what was so asked for, for might be obtained, and that the help of Christ would not be wanting to the widows. For he too had been clothed at the, as the widows had been. When therefore he had gone on his knees and prayed, and as fitting advocate of the poor and of the widows, he had offered to the Lord the prayers entrusted to him, he cried out, Tabitha, in the name of Jesus Christ, arise. Nor did he who said in the gospel, Anything you shall ask in my name I will give to you, fail Peter. For immediately he came to his aid, and because of this death is suspended, and the spirit restored. And to the wonder and admiration of them all, the revived body is reawakened once more to the light of this world. So much could the rewards of merit achieve, so much did good works avail. She who had generously given the means to sustain life to the widows in in need, merited through the prayers of the widows to be recalled to life. 
Accordingly, dearly beloved, the teacher of our life and the master of eternal salvation, while giving life to the multitude of the faithful and providing forever for those restored to life, has in the gospel among his divine commandments and heavenly precepts ordered and prescribed for nothing more urgently than that we be unceasing in the giving of alms, not to cling tightly to our earthly possessions, but rather to lay up treasure in heaven. Sell, he says, what you possess and give alms. Luke. And again, Lay not up for yourselves treasure on earth, where the rust and moth consume, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up to yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither the rust nor the moth doth consume, where thieves do not break through nor steal. Matthew. And when he would show them how a man who has already fulfilled the law may become truly perfect, he says, If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Again, in another place, he declares that if a man is seeking to purchase the grace of heaven and to acquire eternal salvation, let him sell all he has, and with the price of his whole patrimony, let him purchase this precious pearl, that is, life eternal, whose cost was the blood of Christ. The kingdom of heaven, he says, is like a merchant seeking good pearls, who, when he found one pearl of great price, went his way and sold all that he had and bought it. Matthew. Should you be fearful and apprehensive, lest starting to give generously in good works, your own patrimony being consumed in doing good works, you may yourselves be hurt, perhaps be reduced to want, as to have that fear, have no anxiety. That cannot be consumed from which the needs of Christ are supplied, wherewith the work of heaven is fulfilled. And I do not say this on my own authority simply, but declare it to you on the truth of the Holy Scriptures and on the authority of the divine promise. For the Holy Spirit, speaking through the mouth of Solomon, says, He that giveth to the poor shall not want. He that turneth away his face shall be in great need. Proverbs. Showing that the merciful and those who do good, good to others cannot want, but rather that the mean and the empty-handed shall hereafter come to hunger. Again the blessed apostle Paul, filled with the grace of the Lord's inspiration, says, and he that ministereth seed to the sower will both give you bread to eat and will multiply your seed and increase the growth of the fruits of your justice, that you may be enriched in all things. Again, the administration of this office doth not only supply the wants of the saints, but aboundeth also by many thanksgivings to the Lord. Second Corinthians. Since, while thanks are offered to God for our alms deeds and good works by the prayers of the poor, but the patrimony, patrimony of, the law, of the one who gives is at the same time enlarged by the recompense of God. And the Lord in the gospel, looking then into the hearts of men of this kind, with prophetic voice, giving warnings to the faithless and unbelieving, testifies to us, saying, Be not solicitous, therefore, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the heathens seek. For your Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Seek ye therefore first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be added unto you. He declares that all these things shall be added and bestowed upon those who seek the kingdom of God and his justice. It is those who in church, in his church, have labored in doing good works that, the Lord says, shall on the day of judgment be received into the kingdom of heaven. Neither should this consideration, dearly beloved, restrain you, or keep a Christian from good and virtuous works, namely the belief that he is excused out of consideration of his own children, since in spiritual giving he ought to have Christ in mind, who has openly declared that it is he who perceives them, it is he who receives them, and also that it is the Lord, not our fellow servants, whom we are to favor above our own children. And he has warned and taught us. He that loveth father or mother, he says, more than me, is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me, is not worthy of me. Matthew. And in the book of Deuteronomy, similar things are written to strengthen our faith and our love of God. Who hath said to his father and to his mother, I do not know you, and their own children they have not known? These have kept thy word and observed thy commandments. Deuteronomy. For if we love God with our whole heart, we must not put either parent or child before God. This John in his epistle also lays down that the charity of God is not in those whom we see unwilling to show mercy to the poor. He that hath, he says, the substance of this world shall see his brother in need and shall shut up his bowels from him. How doth the charity of God abide in him? First John. 
For if we lend to God by giving alms to the poor, and if we give to Christ what we give to the least of his brethren, there is no reason why a man should prefer earthly to heavenly things, or put human, human before divine things. And as to your children, be a father to them, as such as was to Tobias. To these pledges of your love, give profitable and salutary counsels, such as he gave his son. Tell your children that which he told his son, saying, Hearken therefore, my children, to your father. Serve the Lord in truth, and seek to do the things that please him. And command your children that they do justice and alms deed, and they be mindful of God, and bless him at all times in truth. Tobias. And again, and all the days of thy life, beloved son, have God in thy mind, and take heed thou never consent to sin, nor tr transgress the commandments of the Lord our God. Give alms out of thy substance, turn not away thy face from any poor person, for so it shall come to pass that the face of the Lord shall not be turned from thee. According to thy ability, be merciful, if thou have much, give abundantly. If thou have little, take care even so to bestow willingly a little. For thus thou storest up to thyselves a good reward for the day of necessity, for alms deliver from all sin and from death, and will not suffer the soul to go into darkness. Tobias. Christ has given us his precepts. He has taught us what, what his servants must do. He has promised rewards to those who do good works, and threatened with chastisement the barren. He has set forth his judgment. He has foretold that in which we shall be judged. What justification can they have who do nothing? What is to be said for those who are barren of every good work. And if the servant will not do that which he was commanded, the Lord shall do that which he has threatened, as when he said, When the Son of Man shall come in his majesty and all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the seat of his majesty, and all nations shall be gathered together before him, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd separateth the sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say to them that shall be on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, possess you the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you covered me. Sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then shall the just answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry, or fed thee, thirsty, and gave thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and covered thee? And the king answering shall say to them, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it for one of these least my brethren, you did it to me. Then he shall say to them also that shall be on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me not to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me not to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you covered me not. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also shall answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to thee? Then he shall answer them, saying, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it not to one of these least, neither did you do it to me. And these shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into life everlasting. Matthew. What more could Christ tell us? In what other way could he more earnestly arouse us to works of justice or mercy than by telling us that what is given to the needy and the poor is given to him, and that he is offended when the poor or the needy are denied? So that he who in the church is not moved by the distress of a brother may be moved beholding Christ in him, and that he who has, not, who has no thought for a fellow servant in poverty and need will have a thought for the Lord dwelling in the one from whom he turns away. What, dearly beloved, shall be the glory of those who labor in doing good? How great and full their joy when the Lord begins to number his own people, bestowing on them our merits and good works the rewards he has promised giving heavenly joys for earthly, eternal for temporal, great things in exchange for little ones, and to present us to the Father, to whom he has restored us by his sanctifying power, and to bestow on us the eternity and immortality he has regained for us, giving us life through his own blood, leading us exiles again into paradise, and in truth and fidelity to his promises, opening to us the kingdom of heaven. Keep these promises steadfastly before your minds. Grasp them with full confidence. 
Let them be loved with your whole heart. Let them be purchased by the generosity of your unceasing good works. A glorious and divine thing it is, dearly beloved, to give alms in the name of Christ, a great source of comfort to the faithful, a sure defense of our soul's safety, the bulwark of our hope, the protection of our faith, a healer of sin, something placed within the power of the one who uses it, something great, something simple, a crown of peace without the dangers of persecution, a true gift of God and the greatest, a necessity for the weak, a glory of the strong, and aided by which the Christian attains to grace of soul, merits the favorable judgment of Christ, and may regard God as a debtor to himself. Let us strive promptly and generously for this crown of the works of mercy. Let us enter this contest of goodwill, at which God and Christ are present. Let us who have begun to rise above this life and this world not dally on our journey because of any earthly desire. If the day of the contest, whether it be a day of homecoming or a day of persecution, shall find us contesting swiftly, ready, the Lord will not fail to give us the reward of our merits. In a time of peace, he will give those who have won a garland of white lilies for their good works. In a time of persecution, he will join to it a purple one of roses and violets as a reward of their suffering. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.